put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning, morning. Good morning and welcome back to Youth Wednesdays on Tobago Updates. We have a program for you this morning. I know that a lot has been happening in this space. With me, I have this morning, of course, again, let me just introduce her, Miss Janae Jones. Welcome here this morning, Miss Jones. Hi. Hi, right. good morning, everyone. Yes, and we are here to speak on a very controversial topic that has been risen in our space, and that is the topic of bullying. We know a lot of parents might be feeling a type of way, teachers might be feeling a type of way, peers, students, you know, these type of people maybe. And we are here to bring you from every single perspective what they think on bullying on a whole. We know that bullying itself is something negative, mm -hmm. right? We don't want that we would send children to school and know that they are a victim of bullying. Um, so much so to send your child to school and your child is one way home and the next thing you know, you're hearing that they're a bully in school. Exactly. I think that was the main point of a lot of people on social media, mm -hmm. right? But I don't want to ramble on too much, you know. <laughs> um, my opinion will remain my opinion for this morning, right? But this morning we are here to speak to Mr. Rondell Fields. He is the president of the Single Fathers Association. we will just like to welcome Mr. Fields. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Morning, 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 morning. Yes. So, who or what is the Single Fathers Association? It's, it's, you know, it's a unique, it's a unique association. Mm -hmm. Who or what it is? Well, um, well, actually, we are now we've now rebranded to the Fathers Association of Trinidad and Tobago, and um, it's because we've realized it's important for us for two reasons to be more inclusive because we have always represented fatherhood generally, and also we also want young men to not aspire to single fatherhood, and to us we've always represented the nuclear family, and though I mean you know we always say champion stories of single parentage we understand the value of the nuclear family so that's why we rebranded it to the fathers association at Trinidad and Tobago but the single fathers associations I started that almost 15 years ago a decade and a half and it was because as most people may know um, at that point in time I had my personal issue where I was not given meaningful access to my child to my son and I mean growing up a little boy Without a father, I understood the significance of a father being involved in his children's life. Um, so, I mean, years after the move had begun, we realized that there were a number of fathers who were interested, men just like me, who grew up without fathers, and understood the significance of being a part of their children's life and wanted to ventilate some of the social ills and also some of the systematic issues that they face when trying to do so. So in a nutshell, that is what um, spurred and that is what was the genesis for the organization, Single Fathers Association, that is now rebranded the Fathers Association of Trinidad and Tobago. That reintroduction, we're welcoming Mr. Rondell Fields, president of the Fathers Association yeah, yeah, yeah. of Trinidad and Tobago. All right. Yes. So what has been the main goal or is the main goal of the Fathers Association of Trinidad and Tobago? What drives you all to remain an association to keep fighting for fathers in Trinidad and Tobago? The value of fatherhood. To have a positive approach of empowering fatherhood. Making young boys or making even men sometimes who, who, who show the responsibility. So it's not just respond, it's not just also assisting men who want to be involved, but also trying to positively empower men who may have shook their, their responsibility by, in a sense, trying to provoke them to jealousy, to see the benefit. You have no idea how touching it was. I think the young lady's name is Janae. I'm sorry if I said the wrong name. How important that is for any man to hear their granddaughter tell them happy birthday. It means that that man is involved in not only the granddaughter's life, but in some regard, someone of her parents' life as well. So it speaks to fatherhood. And that is important. I mean, because a father or a grandfather shapes the journey of their lineage going forward. It gives them something to look forward to, 
gives their offspring something to be proud of because that is where they came from. So in that sense, we understand to have a healthy society, especially when it pertains to family life, we must have the meaningful involvement of both mothers and fathers. Very, very important. Okay, so remind me, how long has this organization been in existence? Almost a decade and a half. You may oh. be very small, you may have been very small at that time. Okay, okay, so I'm just here to learn. So explain to me, what are some issues that, you know, single fathers or fathers in a whole in Trinidad and Tobago face when it comes to, you know, being in the workspace, being able to take time from school, from work to deal with issues for your child? Yeah, well, definitely. One of the biggest issues and one of the things we are still piloting, something we've beaten in front of the jo um, Joint Select Committee in, since 2018. We actually had their approval and recommendation as well. One of the biggest things is paternity leave. What you may not know, that fathers, even though they pay the very same NIS contributions as mothers, they only have a policy directive of two to three days. So it means it isn't even legislated. Eh? It's just a policy directive that you should at least you should at least get two to three days paternity leave after you have a child. Now this is counterproductive not only for the father but the entire family. We have had many situations where mommy may have had a C-section and she needs daddy to be involved. These days we have even grandparents working. So it's not like long time where granny could come and help mommy or grandpa could come and help mommy. But she needs daddy's involvement. Then uh, e even beside that, we have encouraged and called on men to step up and to be better fathers. So I think one should expect, it should be expectant of our governments and our states to say then, let us help by giving them something to step on. Let us facilitate that and allow men meaningful time to be there with their, 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 um, their families, as particularly in the immediate postnatal stage of the, the child's life. One, one, one great example is very recently when all those babies died at the hospital. I can remember the trauma many a family went through because the father only had two to three days. So he wasn't even there to help mommy grieve. He wasn't allowed time to grieve himself. He wasn't there to help mommy and be a part of that whole process because he had to run back out to work, even though she was able to go on her maternity leave. So I, I, this is something that we've battled with. That's just one issue. We've had a number of issues where it comes to parental alienation, as I we described before, where you may have access to your child, a court ordered access to your child, and then you are not given that permission because of some acrimonious relationship with the past, with your past intimate partner. And it being a civil matter before the court, there's no, there's no, no, no ramification. There's no, there's, there's no, there's no way you can really get assistance to send you back to the court again. So there are a number of things that take place, a number of things we, we I could, I could go on and on. Parental child abduction, I could talk about parent paternity fraud, where fathers have been brought up for maintenance, arrested, sent to prison. And then when we've done a paternity test, biologically, the children were never theirs. So there's a number of things we've advocated. As I said, over that 15 years, we are also able to advocate for electronic payment of child maintenance. This is why you have the court pay system as well. We also were able to advocate for fathers whose wives would have died. And then when they sought to go to the Ministry of, of Social Development for the pub, to access public assistance grants, they were denied because of their gender. The law didn't deny them, but the culture did. The culture said that if you were a man, you were the head of the home and you could not be assisted. So it was only until we ventilated these things, these infractions of the law, these shortfalls of the systems, and these things that socially take place, that we are seeing some changes when it comes to issues and blockades that are in the way when fathers really want to be involved in the children's life. I think that this, the Fathers Association really does advocate for men on a whole and of course the fathers and, and I must congratulate you on the work that you're doing because as you said, some might, a lot of people may share the opinion that men are sometimes very much undervalued when it comes to a system. Now we're here to speak about the connection of males or, or fathers or young men, I should say, um, in association with bullying. 
right? So we, we are seeing where this topic is a, is a rampant one in the space now based on recent happenings, not speaking to one situation or another, right? What are your thoughts on the recent happenings in this space as it relates to men? Great, great. And I, I'm glad that you, 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 this, you differentiated that because I know there's a still ongoing investigation and suicide to us in the in in our organization is something that is very um we are very concerned about there's something we've highlighted for years so that's why we want a proper investigation to see was this the only cause or was it another cause or was it a combined or compounded cause that led this young man to this action but however we we have raised the alarm on how significantly high male suicide has been for almost the last five years and we have seen no true response not from the ministry of gender affairs not from from any of the organizations you would have expected it to i we highlighted just before these young this this young man took his life we highlighted that very week that in the last two years we've had 202 male suicides out of 246 suicides for the last five years, we've had approximately just over 500 suicides. Out of that approximately over 500 suicides, we've had almost 450 of those being male. So this is something that we have spoken about for a long period of time. When it comes to things like bullying, now we may look at the aspect of just the bullying part, and I don't just want to go into that. What I want to go into is the impact and what it does and how it correlates to a lot of the, the things that happens in many a male's life at this point in time and the way in which males are cultured. Many times males will take that type of, let's say generally, that type of abuse, global abuse, psychological abuse, they take it silently and they say nothing. The reason being, whether it's bullying, whether it's some other type of, of or even domestic violence against them, because they've been cultured to not see themselves as a victim. You've been cultured as a man to, to, to see yourself as weak if you report, if you complain. And in honesty, sometimes you've been cultured in a position where you are not allowed to speak if you stand up and speak in a particular forum. I was at the domestic violence forum the last two weeks ago, and I had to stand up at the end and reprimand those that were there because there was a host of young boys that were impressionable from all the schools in the Port of Spain area. And though we, I understand the significance when we're speaking on domestic violence, we showed a lot of examples pertaining to women and girls, but they did not share one example of where a young boy or a male could be a victim. So you're not exposing boy, you're not exposing males even from boyhood to understand and appreciate that you can be a victim. Whether the gender of the person abusing you, whether if it's another boy, whether if it's a girl, or, or whatever it is, whether it's, a, it's an adult, or whether it's a teen, or whatever. You are not culturing these young males as into recognizing when they can, can be psychologically impacted. So they take it, they take it, they may say something at some point in time, but most times by the time it comes out of their mouth, they are already in a bad position. They're already in a bad place because they didn't see themselves as somebody that may have received help. We're not culturing, we're not culturing that in the education system. We're not telling young boys that they're vulnerable and they and they are impressionable and they can be victims also. And understand? So I think because of the lack of, of, of this so to do, I think that this is one of the reasons that we're seeing this 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 immediate this immediate joke reaction into the taking of one's life. Because that same young boy, even though he survives boyhood, when he becomes a man, he still doesn't see himself anymore as a victim, or he still doesn't, hasn't been given the coping mechanisms to deal with those psychosocial stresses. And it's easier, he decides as a, as a person who may be intelligent to himself that it's more logical for me to take my life. So when you have the, when they have the pressures, whether it's, it's inflicted, upon them by somebody in their workspace, whether it's inflicted by somebody within their home, or whether it's inflicted on them by somebody in their school. Because they have not been trained even from young, or even while they are young, how to cope with it. 
they then look for the mechanism that they think may be most logical, which is the most illogical, which is ending their lives and ending the stresses. Okay. All right. So on your recent live, you spoke to having two sons of your own you are a father and you spoke about having to sit them down and speak to them about especially about what is happening in their space as youths right so i'm asking you now to address our 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 viewers right just as a father would to his sons um giving them advice on how to cope with these things because you go on you go on some of the social media platforms and you're hearing parents saying that i don't want to be that parent who teaches my child peace and then when they go to school they're the ones being the victim to the bullying how do you address this now as a parent who now has you know who is at the standpoint of the receiving end of something like that what do you do I mean, as I mean, a father? I think I, I could tell you personally what I what what I have done, and I think this would work for any parent. Firstly, I've instilled a high sense of value in my sons, a high sense of self worth, letting them know that they are loved, letting them know that they are appreciated, letting them know of their vulnerabilities, letting them know even when I may make mistakes as well. I believe that's one of the, the first things that you can start to do before you can even start to give them guidance in any other parameter. Let them know their self-worth. And when they have that level of self-confidence, you will see your children stand for themselves. You would see that your children, and once you teach them so um, to do respectfully, you don't have an issue. If they have a, a disagreement, or even sometimes my sons may have had an issue they had with, with a teacher, they will come to me and sit in such a respectful man manner and say, Daddy, how should I treat with this? How should I deal with this? Was I wrong or what I said? Well, how should I go back and speak to Sir or speak to the Dean or whatever? And you'd be surprised that when you could give that advice to them, they sometimes settle the issues they are having themselves in school. Just yesterday, I was talking to one of my comrades about that, and he used a very he uses a very similar situation with his son, and his son was encountering, as he explained. A similar scenario where he believed the teacher was bullying him. And when the father wanted to go, the son said, no, daddy, I will come to you. You will guide me and a couple of other students and we'll address it. And he came home. He wrote a letter together with the father, the children, and they addressed that issue themselves. So I'm not saying these things are only for children to address, but I want you to see the type of mindset that is important to instill in your children. Children are a lot wiser than we anticipate, you know. They will regurgitate anything you put in their mind. So whether it is something that is productive or if there's something it is that is filthy, they will produce that in the very best form, in the most energetic way that they can. So my advice, as I said, to persons is first fill them with self-worth and value that cannot be shaken. And secondly, trust them and empower them with the tools to defend themselves. And you see, the defense isn't always a physical defense because there's most times verbal and psychological abuse, more so than physical abuse. And that is the strongest muscle you need to have in their heads, their, their, their minds. So that is in any way I would give anybody the advice to treat in with your children because at the end of the day, they must be, a, be able to have a level of resilience and also a level of resource. You are that resource. When that resilience shakes, that resource becomes you. In situations where they cannot handle it and it needs you to intervene, you must intervene immediately. And even at some times, if you realize you're not getting the response you need and you see their life is in a threat or dangerous position, you withdraw. Just this week, I'm dealing with a single mother with that scenario um, where he is not in that position to treat it. She is neither. And one of the safest approaches she's doing until it is it is rectified. She is withdrawn him from the space until. So okay. as I, that is the type of advice I would give to parents when it comes to dealing or strategizing with these kind of issues. I think the advice is, is one to very much note, um, given that um, our, st our students, well, our children, 
you, chil children of parents <laughs> and normally with their parents on less less time when during the week so the amount of time that you spend with your parents as opposed to what you now spend in school is is you know there is a shift mm -hmm. right so it is important to instill those core values so that when they do go out there they remember what they are they remember how to as you said defend themselves hello so it's um up to the parents and how they deal with the situation because as he said children will regurgitate every single thing your parent does Correct. so if your parent responds to the situation and tells you how to deal with it in a calm manner then you can ensure that it seems like there's some more bullies don't be made right yes right very good assessment, very good yes. assessment. So this this conversation is going it it is going where it needs to go, right? Parents are hearing what they need to hear. Um, of course, children, the viewers, there are a lot of young viewers here on this morning, right? But before we continue, we just want to take a small break and we'll be right back. So before I go, I just want to encourage you to share, share the, the live, live, share, share the, the live, share, share the, the live. live. Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning. And we are back here on Tobago Updates Youth Wednesdays, smack in the middle of the week. But of course, here to continue on in our youthful vibe and vigor here on this very pressing issue. And that is the issue of bullying. All right. So we were speaking with Mr. Rondell Fields. He is the president of the Fathers Association of Trinidad and Tobago. We welcome you back, Mr. Fields. Right Thank on you. with us this morning. We also have a mother. She remains anonymous um, for comfort reasons. We respect that comfort that she would like. Um, she is here to give us her testimony on what bullying of her child was like. Her testimony of being on the receiving end as a mother hearing that your child is being bullied at school. So we'd like to welcome our interviewee this morning. Good morning, we are hearing you. Hello. Hi, Hi. good morning. All right, so we seem to be having some technical difficulties. So when we when we get her on, we'll, we'll have that discussion on that segment. All right, so Mr. Fields, uh, we were speaking mm -hmm. on um, some of the solutions, the, the problems that we are having, and you're saying one of them is to speak to our children and instill those core values. So now I want you to give advice to a teacher who may be witnessing this as many of our children are students and mm -hmm. they leave us to go into the school space on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for teachers or just school staff on a whole when they see students like these enter the space? Uh, being so um, grossly involved when it comes to the education system, I mean, because we go into the schools a lot. Some of our members are actually president of the PTAs across um, Trinidad. And we could tell you the school environment is somewhat of a very different place based on the school area. And I, I think even in the prestigious schools to some level, it's worse than in some of the government institutions, but even in the prestigious schools. And the school environment is very different to the days that we went to school. Eh? I can tell you it's very different. Some schools we've encountered young people that are actually in gangs, young people that have charges, real charges, charges for, for, for guns and ammunition. Some young people that are involved in, 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 in illicit trade and these kind of things. So the school environment has been very different. And I can say that, you know, back in the days you saw the teacher and you still have them, because I don't want to say that takes that hand on approach. You're seeing now most of the younger teachers um, who possibly are in the generation I raised up in, are taking a more hands-off approach. So whereas, you know, they know they said, I think they used to call it loco parentis or some Latin word they used to say teachers used to have. You're not really seeing that to that 
grade level. And I don't want to just knock every single teacher because there are some teachers that are engrossed. There are those teachers that reach out to us that come in these schools to speak to some of these young boys and girls who come from these areas that come into the school who are most time responsible for the bullying and, and, and doing the taxing and doing the fighting, and which is the taxing is actually robbery, right? So this stems way outside of the school. So I mean, whereas I understand there are teachers and you can commit them and ask them to be committed themselves to be involved into reformation. Some of them don't have the skill set to deal with a gang member. Some of them don't have the skill set to deal with a drug dealer. They are trained to deal with a student when it comes to that regard. In the regard where the teacher themselves are being abusive. Now, that is something I think needs to be reprimanded and that's something that the principal needs to treat with if you have a teacher that is identified based on their behavior, based on the, the teaching codes and these things that they are being abusive. That must be disciplined that if it goes straight up to the ministerial level, if the principal doesn't have that capacity or discipline under the, the, um, the capacity to discipline that, that employee. Um, in that regard, definitely the school must get involved if it's getting ministry involved to deal with a, a teacher that is abusive. But when it comes to dealing or even not abusive, being a bully or saying things that might be um, insightful or hurtful or, or damaging to the well-being of the student. But the general climate of the classroom or the school is, is, is very different. Um, we, we, we have to be honest to say that the level of, 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 of respect in the school that was displayed, I would say, possibly two decades ago, is not on that level anymore. Things that you would not utter a teacher. And, and I think we are seeing now competing forces between child children and, and students opposed to that um that combined force for the good, the, the main general good. And as the point that was made, I, I just hoping I'm not misquoting the name Jenny um before. Um, I like the point where she said the, that parents should know how to react when the ch child comes to them. So taking a, a, a positive approach sometimes based on the situation, no matter what the situation, but at least being the adult and displaying emotional intelligence as in the how you react as well when you go into the school or you go to the principal, you go into a way to, hey, there must be resolution and you're willing to take the steps to make that resolution opposed to you picking up a a blade and going in the school, or when you're going to school, you're going and cut out everybody. Or even yeah. if you haven't done it, they're saying to the child, I'm going in the school and cut out everybody. You understand? So I think these are some of the, the, the things that must be discussed. Possibly, I don't know if they're going to have a consultation into the codes that, or, or, or into the, 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 the behaviors that we expect from a, 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 a parent of a bully versus a parent of a victim of bullying versus the school system itself. But these are discussions that we need to have based on this new paradigm shift of the school environment. We yes. cannot use the old things that apply to us to treat with, with, to treat with this new generation. I love how you mentioned um, the parent of the victim, the parent of the bully, and the school system on a whole. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to point toward the parent of the bully. Now, mm -hmm. I in scrolling... Right, I saw your live. I was witness to your live that you made recently speaking on um, certain matters on a whole um, in Trinidad and Tobago as it deals with our young boys. Now, a lot of people have, I don't know what to say, coming to our defense, you know, yeah. in, and in their, in their, in their, the result of them coming to the defense, they, they are now bullying a bully. Mm -hmm. So how do you right. actually deal with this situation? Because, I mean, a lot of people will be emotional about any situation involving bullying, right? They don't want to hear that the child that I brought into this world is now the victim of being abused by the world. So how do you, as a parent, speak to your child who is now the person oppressing someone else? I mean, it takes a great deal of what I mentioned before, emotional intelligence, that we should expect that every adult should, by the time they become an adult, I'm not saying all of it, but they should aspire to what? Because the lack of that same emotional intelligence could lead to something a lot worse than what it, that, than, than it started. Because we rightfully say, and you said, 
Um, I, the, even in this case, I still think that we as a society should be, and that is why I'm very careful when I say I'm waiting for the fullness of the investigation, hoping that there's going to be a full investigation that is uninfluenced, so we really get to the root cause or the factor or all the determinant factors for the action the young um, man did. But if you look at the general society and what they are doing now, it's more like witch hunting. And I mean, um, we're going based on a part of the investigation, which is what we've heard said in the media thus far that he was bullied. But we have to be honest, and if we were considering and managing our emotions, we could say, you know, suicide is something that could involve other things as well. Let's wait for the investi investigation, one. And two, if we need to make mention of the bully and the bully's parents, let's make mention or let's at least advocate that there be a full investigation that they go in there to find out what is the situation the child is facing, what is the situation the parents are facing, so as it is, so that the, this this child's behavior is corrected if there is need for correction. But I don't know if the manner in which we are doing it, dealing with it as adults, is actually even mature. Where we are coming out and 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 they are seeing people making threats towards the 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 the, 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 so the alleged bully that we are seeing is allegedly alone responsible for this and i mean i don't have the facts to say that but we're coming out i heard the parents uh, flew into guyana i don't know how that is true because there's only uh, allegations allegations there, allegations there and i think um yeah you have to have a great deal of emotional intelligence i am not saying that the immediate family is not going to be emotionally impacted in a way where they may not be able to do to at this point in time but what i'm saying the persons on the outside who are disconnected who are uninformed and who may not have facts are not making it any better for that grieving family at this point in time and i think it calls to a sense of emotional intelligence as we said for that immediate family and because this one has ended in death and has, has become a public issue even a, a sense of social responsibility and emotional intelligence for every other adult, particularly those of us who are parents as well, when we deal with this. Now, the issue of bullying is separated. This we must treat with bullying generally, but I am talking about when we use that emotional intelligence, particularly when it ends in death and it is already an emotive situation. We have to be able as adults to at least have the facts before we go off on emotional rants. Because the more that goes out there is the more damage being done to the victim's immediate family. Right. Okay, so let's look at it from the perspective in a sense where the parent um, mm. has a child that is a bully. Sometimes persons may be bullied because of trauma, because how they are being treated in the household, whether they be treating whether they are being treated unfairly or in a sense of social hierarchy in schools where, okay, you have a phone, I don't have a phone, I'm going to bully you because I want a phone as well. In situations where it's based on race, religion, beliefs, because you are overweight and I'm tall or you are too short or anything of that sort, students are unhappy, depression, culture of spaces, let's say in the household where you may, you may uh, interact with your siblings in a sense where it's like, okay, well, no teeth peggy so that's funny in the household but in schools it's completely unacceptable so how do we treat with that and encouraging parents to teach their students teach their children to behave in a manner that is respectful towards your siblings because that is the first development the first set of interaction that you would have with another human being correct well you've answered the question my dear very well that's where it starts at home at the end of the day you must give them as, as i spoke about they haven't self worth and respect for themselves and value for themselves but you must also teach them to value and respect others as well because we all share the space this just isn't your Im immediate space i'm not saying at times you're not going to make a mistake where you need correction but at least at, but we must generally teach our children how to be respectful and most times children learn more from what they see than what you tell them so as we rightfully said just a, a minute ago, your child comes home, he complains about the teacher, not talking about the child part, the, the, the student versus student part. He complains about his teacher. How you respond, you're actually teaching your child to respond. So we must, so even though you may be upset about what has happened, once you realize something, 
that it isn't an immediate risk to the child's life and it is something you could treat with after. You must now know how you respond in front of the child. You're not, you're not going to say, hey, I'm going tomorrow and mash them up in the office. When I go in the office tomorrow, it's me and them. You're, you're culturing the child, how the child should, should teach the child how to behave and how to treat the teacher. Very similarly to if you're talking about um, the relationships, the relationship between students and friends and these things as well. You must have them respect themselves and respect the other person's space as well. You must do that in your own family. Yes, you will make your jokes and you may know, but in times when they cross the line, even within the family, you must reprimand them. But if it is a family where there's no reprimand, as many are family sometimes there today, you, must, you can't expect them to behave here and display a certain type of behavior and not expect them to do that particular or even at a higher level or worse when they go out. You must also teach your children about peer pressure as well because it's a real thing. Big adults that suffer from peer pressure because at home, you may be, they may behave in a particular way, but to please the social status outside, if you have not filled them with that same level of confidence and assurance about, hey, you are good enough who you are, they will go out and try to become somebody else, possibly with the clique or the group that they are amongst. So you must give them, as I said, fill them with self-value and also teach them to appreciate and value others. We, we, we undermine the significance of having a strong productive value system in this world now because we might look at it as the old traditional way. We undervalue the, these things like good moral ethic, these things, these things like good manners. And those were things that were inculcated in us that actually did more than I think we realized. It allowed us to have as I mentioned in all the time, self-respect and also value and respect for others as well. And all if you right. care about others as you care about yourselves, you wouldn't hurt other people. Okay. So, Mr. Fields, we had promised to have you listen to the testimony of a mother who had a child who was being bullied. Now, that child has now progressed. You know, she made it through the school system. She is now very successful in what she does. Um, so right yeah. now, we'll listen to that testimony, not on call, but we'll listen to a voice note, thank God for technology, that she has yeah. sent in with the, with, um, with the testimony of what has happened. So we'll listen to that now. My daughter was, being, my daughter was bullied every single day at a secondary school in Tobago. And as a parent, I was at the school almost every day because it was one incident to the other. <clears throat> two days after doing a new glasses, the message came, two students broke her glasses. I had to go into the school. The pace come all over on her seat. It took over her entire clothes. She sat in the classroom for the, all day crying because she was ashamed to move and many other incidents. I remember one time I was brought to tears because I felt helpless. I started to get fed up going to the school. And then one day my child said to me, Mommy, I do not want to go back to school. And that broke my heart on that day. I think that is where the box stopped for me. When I went to the school, I think the school wasn't doing anything about it. Even the council at the school. At one time, the principal said to me, um, with all due respect, it is not your child is the only person being bullied. And that threw me in a different direction. That was the response by the young <laughs> principal to me, a gentleman. And I felt disrespected, and then, and then I realized they weren't going to fix the problem. One day I had to stand up in a PTA meeting and ex express how I felt and how this situation was affecting my family. And other parents at the same time, after I was finished, they started to talk out. A lady broke down in tears for her daughter. And I decided one day I would start going to the school and I had to involve the police. I had to involve the police into the matter because I think that the schools, so the schools are really not doing anything to help these children. 
Eventually, I transferred my daughter to another school in order to get some satisfaction because it was really, really difficult. It's a difficult thing for parents. It is easy for persons in the public to comment and say a lot of things. But my condolences go, goes out to that child that killed himself and his family. If I didn't take a step for my daughter and keep on the situation and continue to monitor, who knows what would have happened to my daughter for today. I think the police or the law of Trinidad and Tobago need to change so that parents face the brunt of the law for their children's action. It's time parents get charged, like in the States, for the actions of their children. They're no longer morals are being taught at home because I know that some parents encourages their children in this kind of type of act. It is wrong for a child to be at school and feel uncomfortable. We need to take a stand against bullying. All right, so Mr. Fields, your thoughts? Hello? Yes, I'm, I'm hearing you. Oh, right, now now you ask me something? Yes, I'm asking you what are your thoughts on hearing this testimony? Well, yeah, I mean, definitely it's, it's a testimony that uh, I've heard a lot. What I will commend her on is that she was relentless. She didn't stop. And if she didn't do it herself, my next suggestion was going to be exactly what she said. A lot of the things that, <clears throat> a lot of the examples she gave, these things, once a child reaches you over, over the age of eight, they, they, they can't go before the children in court, you know. Even if it means they're getting the community police involved, they're getting the police themselves involved. And that is why I must commend the community police, particularly in the central division where we work, I could testify for them. They are always in school giving lectures to those children there about bullying. They always talk about be a body, not a bully. That is their slogan. But they also show the legal ramifications because there are the laws there already. It's not about re reinventing the wheel. And because sometimes there's inactivity, people believe it's just, well, I understand it'll be we're trying to say arrest the parents. But as it is right now, the children can be brought before the children. The, the, the children court, we, I have seen it happen many times. Many times I have seen it happen, particularly when the community police are involved and is identified of particular bullies that they get involved. So if you now must be able as the parent and the guardian to see, all right, if I've taken it into the school and the school isn't doing anything, but let's be honest. You know, sometimes you say the school isn't doing anything, but we fail to admit that socially there is a, a, a push from other regards and in other spaces where teachers really do have powers again in the school when it comes to children. So that is another dialogue we have to have if we're looking to fix the solution. The discipline matrix from 20 years ago is not the discipline matrix in the school today. And we need to see how or if this has impacted a behavioral change in our school environment. So I hear when people often say the school, the school, the school, the school. But have we examined what the school could do possibly more than just do a report to the ministry and then the ministry lag and the ministry waste time behind it? So I can advise parents, if you believe or you have evidence of particularly assault, and as I said before, robbery, what people call in tax, you do not have to wait for the discipline matrix within the education system. Step out of that because they've now become criminal offenses. And you now need to have the police involved. Once you have the evidence, a criminal offense is, has, has taken place. And in the very same light, the parents are, is the ones going to be responsible because they will have to foot whatever bills the child may have incurred. And that is the reality of it. And as I said, we need to go beyond talking about just crafting laws. And we need to now look at a way of now changing behavior. Because as I identified before, some parents are afraid of their children, you know. I don't think people understand this type of students we have, we have in the school now. You're talking about we have young children, boys and girls, who are actively members of gangs from the age of 12 to 16, who parents live in fear, you know. Be, and, and, and heal from environments and heal from gangs within communities where their parents have to fear them. 
So it has that aspect of it as well. Do the parents have a responsibility of well as well? Yes. Sometimes they want to protect the children from the arms of the of, of the of the the officers or, or, or of the the police and not report them. But at the end of the day, it is a reality. And I think that as a society, we are so out of touch of what is taking place in schools, what the school environment is that we envision our school days and think the same discipline matrix is, in, is, in, is instilled, think the same response matrix is instilled, and think that is the same type of students going to these schools. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a good position for us here because we're talking about bullying. But I think our problem is even bigger than bullying because it is actually criminal offenses being, being carried out in the schools today because there are children, whether we want to admit it or not, that are engaging in active criminal behavior that even, and yes, I'm not saying their parents possibly, possibly aren't responsible for allowing their children to be, um, to grow in areas and environments that has now inclined them to be criminally minded. I am definitely going to blame the parents for that. But the reality is when it's gotten to that point, what and how are we going to respond? So there must be a responsive approach for those children who have already reached there and are bullying and terrorizing the schools. And there must also be a proactive approach where we step in before these type of things happen in the family, get involved in the family life and figure out what's going on with young children and young families in our society. Our family lives are, are, are plagued with, with, with separation and plagued with acrimony and plagued with all these things. And we are producing a generation of children that are highly traumatized because their homes are trauma, are trauma, trauma centers. And that is the reality of it. So we can't fix bullying without dealing with a lot of the root causes. Re bullying is, a, is like a symptom or a side effect of, of the real, real, real root cause. And a dangerous one too, a dangerous side effect because it causes and hurts and impacts the lives of others who are not even involved in the trauma that was inflicted upon the original child or their family okay all right and you have you have actually brought um that you have reminded our viewers i should say of the perspectives that we promised this morning and you mentioned a lot of how mothers or, or parents on a whole should get involved um in their child where they know where to take legal action right and that that will be discussed later on on the show so you are you, Mr. Fields, are invited to stay on to listen to that um, segment. Um, but before no we go, um, Mr. Fields, I just want to thank you so much for being with us. But before we go, I just want to um, share with you the success story of someone who was once bullied in school right. and now, and now is, is doing well out of school as she's graduated and moved on into the different aspects of her life. Great. That's the other school. It started there a little bit, but there and then she started to stand up for herself. But she's now out of the school system. And I think that sometimes it's still, she, she has not fully moved on. It still affects her in some way or the other. We would see it. Sometimes some things that she would say, sometimes she would reminisce on, you know, the things in the past that happened to her then. But we know it takes time to heal and with our own counseling getting private counseling and talking to her it will help all right okay so mr fields Perfect. yes yeah. so we know that something positive can come out when we step into our children's lives when we get an idea of how they're feeling in school of their emotional of the emotional um era of their life where you know they're growing up as teens and they're now starting to learn themselves and what they can do you know, and what, what powers they have, what strengths they have, what weaknesses they have to work on, mm -hmm. right? So we do encourage parents to be in their children's lives and to listen to what they have to say. To the students or the young ones listening who may be in school now, it is not good to bully. I'm just going to put it out there. You do, do not be the oppressor to somebody who is literally just coming to school for being in school and doing what school needs to do for them, and that is to learn, right? And for those who are victims to bullying, um, I just want to remind you all that you are loved and someone is looking out for you just as long as you take the right channels. 
right? So we are here to remind you here on Tobago Update Youth Wednesdays as youths that we, we do have strength, strength in numbers, strength as an individual. Mr. Fields, thank you so much for reminding us of that yes, this sir. morning. All right, so we are going to take a small break. And before we go, I just want to encourage you all to share, share the live, live, share the live, share, share the, the live. live. We'll be right back.
Good morning and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. As you know, it is Youth Wednesdays where we take the opportunity to discuss uh, issues that have been affecting young people. This morning, we are discussing bullying, an issue that is being highlighted across the media and is uh, uh, given some sort of light um, into the situation and the plight that a lot of young people face within the school system. Today, joining me is Mr. Ken Mapp, Vice Principal of Harmon, Seven Harmon School of Seven Day Adventist, and PC Damien Mills of the School Intervention Unit Special Victims Department. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Michelle. Good morning. Always a pleasure. Thank right. you for having me. So bullying, bullying, bullying. I was a victim of bullying. And we know that it is something that, you know, mm. previous to all of the um, attention that it has gotten um, on the media space, it was something that we, ne we did not necessarily um, speak about often enough, right? And we saw um, a quite unfortunate incident where one of uh, where a young person from four who unfortunately took his life because of bullying. So I believe that that incident would have sparked some concern amongst um, people within Trinidad and Tobago and would have then um, basically allowed for opportunity to discuss um, the issue. Do you guys think that we take bullying seriously in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, yes, I would say um, we do take bullying seriously. Mm -hmm. But however, we have to look at the, 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 the real issue where even though we are taking bullying seriously, what is in place mm -hmm. to treat with issues of bullying? So if, because, for example, bullying in Trinidad and Tobago uh, the, the, the issue of bullying, there's no legislative definition. So it means that bullying is not illegal. However, can we sit and say that there's nothing in place to deal with bullying? No. There are methods put in place at the schools and so on. And we always say this to parents. So bullying is a, 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 an issue where um, we, the police, we have been looking into it. We have been going into the schools. We have set up systems in place where we talk to the classes. We talk to the children. We even talk to the PTAs, even the churches within the Special Victims Department in Tobago. Mm -hmm. And we always encourage our parents and our students and our teachers to look at it as serious as if it were a report of threats to kill. Mm -hmm. So that is what is happening right now. Okay, uh, Mr. Mapp, as a educator, mm -hmm. right, we know that the media is putting heavy pressure on the schools to address bullying, right? However, based on my personal observations, we are seeing where bullying stems from the home and it is an issue where it is, you know, parents are not necessarily taking the initiative to ensure that their, um, that their children are acting in accordance with the school rules and basically have some sense of discipline within that environment. As an educator, do you think that more needs to be done on the parts of the teacher and the school administration and the PTA and so on to ensure that the, that the situation of bullying is um, taken control of? I believe that um, the situation has become very, well, much more challenging because of our current cultural setting. Mm -hmm. Now, the school setting is, is a place where you always have a lot of bullying. But at the same time, the society itself has become kind of stretched. And I'll explain what I mean. We have always had a Cult, have always had cultural accounting taking place in society. Cultural accounting. I call it, we call it sociological, sociological accounting. Where people, one must be better and one must be less. I'll give you an example. There was a time I was watching some, some little children play. And the little children were playing, there's a brown girl in the ring, cha la 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 la. And one little, one girl went in, but she had a little bit of, lighter complexion. She was Negro, 
but she had a lighter complexion. And as she was, as they were, as she went into the ring, they were saying to her, "But you not black, you white." So that 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 layering of of one must be better than the other comes in there, right? And then you also have the issue of the society becoming more and more shame focused and pride focused. So where have people uh, wanted to be better than in this school setting? Who wants to have the best playground bag? Who wants to have this? Who wants to have that? And you also have this situation where everything is on the media. Everything is in a, sh in a shame culture. It's the culture is becoming polarized. Mm -hmm. So the whole situation with Terence and all that, shame. So you have that in the, sy in the system and teachers are in the midst of that. The mm -hmm. education system is in the midst of that. Trying their best, trying our best to try to help our children to still have some sense of value in a culture where it's polarized, in a culture where the, the child is living in a state where I must be better than you. Mm -hmm. I must be better than you. I must be better than you. And that's how they live. And to get value and validation, they are searching for that. So it's a tough ask for the teachers. The teachers can do more, I believe. But it's a really, really tough ask for the teachers in a culture like that. It's mm -hmm. tough. We could ask teachers to do more, but it's a tough ask. Yes. So you said that we could ask teachers to do more. Mm -hmm. What more can teachers do based on the provisions or the guidelines that they have to operate with? Right? Mm -hmm. They can't um, do corporal punishment that has been taken out. Mm -hmm. They can't say certain things to students because let us be real. If a teacher decides to correct your child, chances are the parents will come to school and make an issue with said teacher for correcting your child on a on a particular um, yeah. behavior right i think that for me personally i think that parents need to step up to the plate a little more because let's be honest how many parents are in pta or attend pta uh, meetings okay you're working you can't come to a pta meeting okay fine how many parents are in contact with form teachers Okay, mm -hmm. you're not in contact with form teachers. You have an issue with the school, you have an issue with a teacher, but you will not come to the school and highlight that issue, right? Okay, how many parents are taking the time to ensure that their children are doing what they are supposed to be doing when they get home from school? Right? We're seeing now where cyberbullying is becoming a serious issue. I have seen where young children as um, young as 13 years old um highlighting or saying some serious things on the media space that would make you question if this is not a 30 year old mm. individual right i think that parents are not as involved in the lives of their children as they should be mm. and we are expecting teachers to pick up that shortfall um to basically try to mend the situation that you know it's being created here mm -hmm. you understand so yes i do believe that accountability needs to take place within the school system if I, if there is uh, um, an issue in terms of bullying i do believe that it needs to be addressed in accordance with whatever guidelines is in place as an educator mm -hmm. Right. However, at that same point in time, we need to take into consideration that as a parent, you need to step up to the plate and handle the situation um, properly. Yeah. You understand? Because it cannot, you cannot have no authority at home. Right. You cannot enforce rules at home and then expect your child to follow the rules at school. Yeah. Everything starts um, at the home. Now, as you said, you believe that oh. bullying should be treated as a criminal offense, as oh. a threat mm. to kill. In the U.S., they have a serious issue with school shootings. Oh. Right. And I cannot remember the state, but there was a sheriff who said that he's going to perp walk students who make such threats or students who are bullies or whatever perp walking is um almost a form of embarrassment in a sense right what that basically means is that the child would be arrested and would be walked throughout the streets right arrested to show that this child is in fact a criminal right mm -hmm. um some people disagree with that but if we are treating it as a criminal offense what should be done Okay, first of all, let me say this. Um, poop walking is a little bit extreme. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit extreme because we have to consider the fact that mm -hmm. 
in addition to the bullied mm -hmm. needing help mm -hmm. and restoration and so on, the bully also needs help. Correct. Mm. And I've been looking, you know, okay. and permit me to say that what happened with Jaden mm. is very unfortunate. Mm. And we have to condemn bullying in all its forms, 100%. True. Something needs to be put in place True. and it needs to be done as precipitously as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a quote that goes, the, the, the ruin of a nation, mm -hmm. the ruin of a nation begins in the home of its people. Mm -hmm. The ruin of a nation begins in mm -hmm. the home of its people. And if you, look, if you were to look at the homes, mm -hmm. what is the most valuable asset or assets in our homes today? Hmm. It's not our, um, our cars, it's not our furniture, it's our children. Right. Mm. And so right. we as parents need to ask ourselves, what was our response mm. when the first report of our child striking or assaulting someone came home? Mm. Usually right. we would say, and I have seen it many times, we would right. say, leave him, he would grow out of it. Mm -hmm. But in truth and in fact, as we as parents wait until the child or the children go out of those actions, they are actually going into it. Mm -hmm. And then when we are now ready to do something about it, it is already too late. We, are, we have to recognize that children do not go into school as bullies. Somewhere along the line, something happened. And the involvement of the parents plays a critical role in how this child, who is so-called or labeled a bully, turns out. Mm -hmm. Bullying is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a problem both for the bullied or the victim and the bully themselves. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking at um, what needs to be done, we also have to consider the bully. I've been looking at the social media outcry mm -hmm. because of this incident that would have taken place in Trinidad with um, young Jaden. Mm -hmm. and, as for, and as unfortunate as it, it is, I have not seen one comment seeking help for the bully. Everyone is against the bully. Everyone mm. hates the bully. Everyone is even, people are even attacking his family and so on. But we have to consider that he's also a child and he needs help. Mm -hmm. So we have to help him. Mm -hmm. We have to look at restorative, restorative justice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that we are not teaching him to continue in his actions. We are looking to restore his actions. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are looking to restore that good child that once was there. Mm -hmm. and even empower him to um, counsel and to support his friends to mm -hmm. also do better. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we would need to take a break. Don't forget to share the live, share the live, share the live. We'd be back to continue our discussions on bullying. Put a smile on your face. When you're moving from place to place, place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning, morning. Okay, good morning and welcome to the uh, Tobago Updates Morning Show. It is Youth Wednesdays and we are discussing bullying. Um, so in studio with me this morning is Ken Mamp, Vice Principal of Harmon School of Seventy Adventists and PC Damian Mills uh, of the School Intervention Unit Special Victims Department. Um, earlier, we were discussing uh, bullying. We were talking about the role that the parents play. We talked about um, the role that the schools play. We spoke about treating bullying as a criminal offense. Now, the situation with young Jaden, who passed away, right, uh, due to suicide, we are seeing on the media where people want justice, right? So, I have seen multiple videos surfaced on the internet where it is um, adults now are bullying the parents, the sister, the mother, the father, right? And I think that that is in some way to get them to feel how the family is feeling because, I mean, they would have lost a son. Oh. Um, Mr. Mills and Mr. Mapp, oh. what do you have to say to that? Losing a child is probably the worst pain any parent would have to endure. And I really mm. feel it for Jaden's mom and for Jaden's family. Condolences to the family. Mm. True. Um, 
as I said earlier, it is really, it is very unfortunate that this had to be the end result. Mm -hmm. And it, but it also speaks to a greater issue, a greater problem, because you see problems would flourish where solutions are non-existent. Mm -hmm. True. Bullying is a problem and it has been a problem for as long as I can remember. I mean, for, as a matter of fact, I too, like you, was a victim of bullying. Mm. So much so that my mother had to leave home every afternoon. And in those days, we didn't have transport, motor car and so on. Mm -hmm. And she would have to stand and wait for me and walk home with me until one Friday afternoon, the bullies, about 15 of these boys, mm. did not recognize or did not know that my mother was walking with me and they jumped out of the bushes with wood and bottle and stone. Oh. And my mother said to them, oh, so you all want to kill my child? And all of to kill me today. And so they ran away. Mm -hmm. What happened there, and, and from that day, that basically was the end of it. Mm -hmm. Because they recognized that my mother was interested in my safety so much so that she was willing to do what was necessary. Mm -hmm. And there's a lesson in that. You see, bullies tend to attack and to prey on those that they believe have no support. And so when situations or instances happen at schools, we as parents, we need to show a greater support. We cannot or we have to come out of the um, the habit that we have in saying, I'm a busy man, I'm a busy woman, I can't go to school. In my own experience as a police officer, when the schools call us for intervention meetings with parents, mm -hmm. the parents of the bully seldom is present. When there's PTA meetings and issues such as this needs to be discussed, the parents of the bullies, alleged bullies, are seldom present. Mm -hmm. And so what you are saying indirectly to your child is that I do not have time to treat with issues or um, situations that you are involved in. Mm -hmm. So we are actually saying, while it's not saying, you can go ahead. Mm -hmm. We need to recognize also that as a parent, our children puts us or our words to the, at the top of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so there's very little that anybody else would be able to say to trump the word of a parent. Hmm. And we have parents ill-speaking teachers. We have parents ill-speaking students. We have parents becoming emotional and, 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 and treating the situations with an iron fist, you know, confrontational and so on. And when we operate as that, as a parent, we are saying to our children, okay, if my mother or my father can do that, then I can. Mm -hmm. Quite recently, I was having a conversation with a principal of a high school, sorry, a primary school, and she indicated that there's a troublesome child at the school that does not even care about being arrested. He does not even care about being killed, and he's a primary school child. Oh, wow. When you look into the situation and you got to the bottom of it, his mother said to him that I went to jail already mm -hmm. and I did not die. Hmm. So if you go to jail, you are not going to die. Now, I am saying, how can you as a parent hmm. say something as this to your child? What can another person know in authority at the school, the police, the social hmm. workers, the guidance counselors? What can we now come to this child and say hmm. if his mother, change, whose word is at the top of the mindset. spectrum, hmm. what can we say to change his mindset? Hmm. Mommy went to jail, she didn't die, so hmm. I can't do it. Wow. So we have to be very careful as parents that our actions or inactions serve to enable our children mm -hmm. and in, in, enable them, in enabling them, um, their, 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 their actions will continue to progress and progress into something of a more serious nature. And that is the main issue. Now, I'm not blaming parents wholly and solely. Mm -hmm. Bullying is also as a result of a failed system mm -hmm. that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, we have methods in place, there are legislations and so on. Mm -hmm. For example, when I say legislations, I'm talking about the Children's Act. There's no legislation or, or legislative definition for the term bullying. And so bullying is not a criminal offense. So when we talk to parents and so on, when we 
um, do meetings with PTAs and churches and so on. We try to tell parents, take the word bullying out of your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Because in accordance with the Offenses Against the Persons Act, Sections 30A and B talks about harassment, which is illegal. Mm -hmm. And it also outlines every act a person can perpetrate against another that can be deemed as harassment. Mm -hmm. And if you look at those acts and you place them parallel against what usually happens in circumstances of bullying, you would recognize that they are one and the same. Mm -hmm. And so once a person cannot be um, brought before the court Probably. or um, taken before you know, um, legal authority to answer for the term bullying, mm -hmm. the opposite can happen for harassment. Mm -hmm. We need to be specific. If you are going to the police station to make a report, do not go to the station and say, my child is being bullied. Mm -hmm. And that is why you might see that there's nothing happening. You might feel that there's nothing happening mm -hmm. because there's no legal definition. Mm -hmm. So as, as police officers, we cannot charge someone for bullying, but we can charge for harassment. Right. We can charge for assault. Mm -hmm. Bullying mm -hmm. usually encompasses four modes. Physical bullying, verbal bullying, cyber bullying, and social bullying. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the station, be specific. Mm -hmm. instead, of saying my, instead of saying my child is being bullied, Say, my child was assaulted. Mm. My child is being assaulted. Mm -hmm. My child is being taunted. My child is being harassed. Be specific in terms of what is actually Tools. happening. And you as a citizen mm. have a right to ensure that we as the police officers are held accountable for the report that you make. Gotcha. You can ask a question, you can do follow up and so on. Mm -hmm. I think that is something quite interesting there. Mm -hmm. Because I think I don't think that the general public has um, any knowledge in terms of mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you cannot necessarily charge for bullying. However, you could charge for assault, you could charge for taunting. So I think that that is something that is important and something that is noteworthy. Definitely. VP, do you have any comments that you want to share? Yeah, well, the, um, what, 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 what a mil Officer Mill says is fantastic and I, I agree, but I want to just add a, a segment it, aspect it. What his mommy provided for him was what we as a society need for those who are weak. Because mm -hmm. the issue of bullying has to do with weakness. Mm -hmm. Weakness on the part of the victim mm -hmm. and weakness on the part of the, the person who is doing the bullying. Mm -hmm. Weakness, mm -hmm. because the bully is saying, I am strong. It's like the bully, bully is trying to confess or tell himself, I am strong. But he's weak inside, he's a coward inside, but he's trying to say, I am strong. And the person mm -hmm. who is a weak person is also weak. So you have two weak people, weak persons, one weak person, Weak persons, one is passive in response to their weakness and one is aggressive in response to their weakness. Mm -hmm. And that kind of dichotomy takes place mm -hmm. and you have a school society. The school society needs to provide protection. Mm -hmm. The teachers need to provide protection. Mm -hmm. Prefects need to provide protection for those who are weak. The school has to see and identify people who are weak. Mm -hmm. If the school doesn't, doesn't do that, the school will end up in a situation where these circumstances continue to operate. Mm -hmm. it has to be, the school has to be sensitive because bullying is not a school issue. Bullying is, is a nursery school issue. Bullying mm -hmm. is, a, is a family issue. Bullying is, is a marriage issue. Mm -hmm. Bullying is a workplace issue. Mm -hmm. It's not, not just a school issue. Mm -hmm. This is a case of people who are being advantaged. People who are being taken advantage of because people feel as if I am better than you, and you shouldn't be down there. And the challenge is that we are so quick to label because this child looks different. This child don't do things like how other children do it mm -hmm. because this child darker, because this child have a, a, a teeth that not missing, mm -hmm. because this child sucks of a hole. Anything that, that puts us in a position for, for labeling, mm -hmm. we work with it. We love labels. And once we could label you as less than, label you as, as nothing, label you as, hey, and, and in labeling, what it does, it makes us feel better. The person who is being the, being the bully. That's what I mean? Because the whole search in this society is for validation. The search for value. The society is searching for value. Every child in the school system searching for value. 
and they find different ways to get value. And the culture teaches them how to get value. How do you get value in the Tobago society? You must dress properly. How do you get value in society? You must have a, a certain complexion. That is how you get value. You must have, you must, you must, you must have your hair with, you must, for ladies, you must have edges in the, in the hair. They find value. Finance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Of money. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's a search of value. And in, in attacking somebody, in hurting somebody else, in making somebody feel less than, in other words, mm -hmm. you are one, I am ten. Mm. That's what I mean, and even though you have the gifts, even though you are you are actually seven, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you're seven or ten, but in my eyes, you are one. I will tell you, you are one. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll tell you, you are zero. You mm -hmm. are nothing. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, because in the process of me telling you, you are zero, I am <laughs> feeling like ten. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean, and that is what happens in society. And schools have to be, schools have to provide that space of protection. Bullying is not new. Bullying is happening all the time and has been happening from ages. From since from since Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I mean. But but the culture the culture that Jesus suggests mm -hmm. is a culture that is different from what the world is suggesting. Because mm -hmm. the, the culture of Jesus, when the woman was caught in adultery, Jesus never embarrassed her. Mm. Jesus never embarrassed her. So that is the culture. But our culture that exists today mm -hmm. is a culture that shames. Everything on, on Facebook is, is shaming. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. And we have to protect. Protect not just the victim. Mm -hmm. Protect the bully. Mm -hmm. We have to protect. Because mm -hmm. the bully needs protection too. Mm -hmm. Because the society is such. There's a song that says, We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And the past says, we must save each man's dignity and save each man's pride. Mm. You have to protect people, protect mm. each child, protect and save. Because mm. at the end of the day, we all have value. Mm -hmm. And what is happening in Tobago with the crime is mm. a case of value as well. Mm -hmm. Because you feel that this person not as valuable as you, because for whatever reason, and mm. you could just take their life, it's mm. a value issue. Mm -hmm. And we have to see it for what it is. Each person must be seen as beautiful, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mills is different from I am. We are different people, different mm -hmm. style, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he is valuable 100%. Mm -hmm. I am valuable 100%, oh, and you are valuable 100%. Mm -hmm. And everybody must be able to see that. And if we're not seeing that, we will always have this kind of dichotomy. Mm -hmm. And the society teaches us, whether we, whether we, we want to admit it or not, we gotta face it. Because we know when I, passed, when I did common entrance, I knew I knew that I had value because mm. I had passed the bishops. Mm -hmm. Follow me? I knew I had value. I passed the bishops. Mm. But the society shouldn't be teaching that. Mm. The society should be teaching that every school is value. Oh, high value, high value. But it's in the, built into the society is, is that. Uh -huh. <laughs> follow me? Built into the society. Mm -hmm. And that has to change. And it's a, it's a conversation that I'm not sure if we're willing to be honest about. Mm. But it has to change. Mm -hmm. it, has to change. it has to change. I like the fact that you brought up value mm -hmm. and validation. Mm -hmm. I have seen that multiple times mm -hmm. during my years in high school. Yeah. Right? A student has more than you. I am better than you. We have a superiority complex mm -hmm. in Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. where it is. If I have more than you, I am automatically better than you and that I am on top of you, you are less than me, right? And I think that bullies thrive off of that validation. And what we tend to happen is that these bullies always have a clique with them. Most of the times, the bully has a large group of friends. Why? Because they're associating with that validation, right? Because I remember when I was going to school, I was not rich. Right. All I had in my pocket was, I think, was twenty dollars at the time, right. and that was to catch car from home to go to school. Right. So I wouldn't um, buy you. Well, I used to I used to eat box lunch. Right. They call it grub now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I used to eat my grub. Right. I had uh, you know large shirts. I didn't have any brand names. My hair was still pretty much childish. Right. So I was not the typical. Um, 
a list popular girl, you know, the, yes, the slip yes, down yes, edges yes, and the yes, slip yes. bun and mm -hmm. all of that. I didn't have all of that. So because I did not have, I was also automatically seen as less than, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that is something that we need to pay attention um, with. We have the whole spray gun, spray gun trend, mm -hmm. right? We have people you now testing to see if your spray gun is a real spray gun. You understand? So if your spray gun not yeah. real, and I think it's the red lining that they have inside the spray gun now to say mm -hmm. that that is authentic the real, authentic, mm -hmm. original, mm -hmm. right? If you don't have them, then you are less than me. Of course. You understand? Valley, and then Valley, we look Valley at nature. how our society praises um, material things mm -hmm. to our value. You know what I mean? Um, you also spoke about crime. I have seen seven and six written on walls, in bathrooms, on books, on desks, on bags. I am seeing that that criminal element is a sort of percolating within the school system. And what we're having now is almost like gangs forming in the schools. I am seeing that as a serious issue because we have people, young people who are in environments where there are gangs, are in homes where there is criminal activity taking place. So it's like that is being transferred within that space. And I think that that is something that we need to take into consideration as well. And the fact that bullies are, once they get older, and I was having a conversation with my friend last night, they are going to be in the workplace. Of course. Right? They're going to be in the workplace, right? They, that attitude wasn't broken out of them. They always have it. Nobody reported it because everybody is scared of the repercussions of a bully because I remember reporting a particular incident mm -hmm. and there were threats made to me, right? I was told that they're going to find me. They're going to beat me up and wherever, wherever be the case, right? But what we're seeing now is that when you go to mm. order food, the worst customer service you ever have. Right. And my friend and I were saying that some of the bullies that bullied us in, in our school, they are now working on the customer services poor. You understand? I don't think that's a conversation that we're ready for. True. But the bullies are not. They don't stop at the school level. They transfer True. and they, they enter the workplace. True. True. Right. So I think that this is a whole societal issue and that's something that, you know, we need to take into consideration. But what I want to get at here is that bullying do you think that that also plays a role in crime as well most definitely mm -hmm. as, i mean mm -hmm. as was already mentioned mm -hmm. the bullies mm -hmm. okay bully bullying um takes a certain level of continuity mm -hmm. a child does not enter preschool as a bully mm -hmm. A child enters preschool all bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, as they say, right? <laughs> Correct. Ready for but somewhere along the line, that 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 um, need for um, showing a value mm. and so on comes in, and the practices now become part of the, the personality of this child. Mm -hmm. If left unchecked, it now goes from preschool to primary school. Mm. If it mm -hmm. continues to be left unchecked, it now goes on from primary school. Yes, he has grown go. into it even more. Mm -hmm. His yes. actions, yes, his <laughs> actions are going to get worse. Mm -hmm. And he now comes into the secondary school system and onward into society, not just mm -hmm. the workplace, so they see into the, society. They see so the seed has now germinated <laughs> and becomes a tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what they say? Mm -hmm. Cannot happen after a tree is already has already become a tree. Mm -hmm. It's too late. Mm -hmm. So we have to start within the school. Mm -hmm. For example, and I always suggest this. Mm -hmm. Our moral education um, system that we have happening at the secondary school system, it needs to be, it needs to be recalibrated and revamped and reintroduced. We also, we also need or should introduce, if not the same thing, something of a similar nature in our primary school system. Mm -hmm. So we need to teach our children values. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about values, the good values, mm -hmm. we need to teach our children how, to, as, as Mr. Mapo have already mm -hmm. alluded, we need to teach our mm -hmm. children how to recognize that every person, yeah. as well as his or her property, yeah. Yeah. is also valuable. Respect, mm -hmm. respect, None yeah. is better than the other. Mm -hmm. We need to teach them love. And it starts from within the home, mm -hmm. coming forward. Mm -hmm. And so bullying um, 
can be um, looked at as having a part to play in crime. We mentioned these bullies at the secondary school level or at the school level, there's always a clique, mm -hmm. right? What is a gang? Mm. A gang is a group of two or more persons coming together for the perpetrating of criminal activities mm. or otherwise nefarious intents. There's nothing good about it, in other words. Mm. So if this bully has a gang that he's moving with throughout the school and, and, and perpetrating acts against other weaker mm. children, because the whole act and issue of bullying um, speaks to a power imbalance, as we have been talking about. Mm -hmm. There's always a strong, there's mm -hmm. always a weak mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or vulnerable, right? Take that out of the school and place that now into the society realm, mm -hmm. you recognize that it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. The same bully with his clique in school is now a gang leader with his gang members in society. Mm -hmm. So there's a direct correlation that we have to look at. So it calls for um, sensitization, mm -hmm. it calls mm -hmm. for education, and it calls for real effort. Mm -hmm. it calls for collaboration with all the parties involved. And when I, when I say parties, I'm talking about the parents, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the teachers, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the village. Mm -hmm. Long ago, mm -hmm. we always would hear, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. The school was also part of this village. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. parents used to work together. Mm -hmm. You could not have done something down the road and someone tells your mother or father about it and mm -hmm. you when you go home you have to answer you know mm -hmm. true for example when i was a child 15 16 i used to play basketball mm. we used to come to shore park every night and play basketball my friends used to sit and smoke the old marijuana and so on after the game and so on i was never involved i never even liked the scent of this thing mm -hmm. so i would always sit by myself in a corner mm -hmm. someone passing a friend of my mother would have told my mother <laughs> to this day I'm, I'm still not sure why <laughs> but would have told my mother that i was seen smoking my one oh my god and my <laughs> mother went off the charts on me when i got home that night <laughs> she banned me from basketball she took steps <laughs> and so that has mm -hmm. helped me become the person I am today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a child, I did not understand it, but it has helped me become the person I am today. She took the steps that were necessary, yeah. whether I liked it or not. And that's why I'm always saying the parents need to get on board mm -hmm. and make real efforts. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so in, in, in going forward, mm -hmm. that collaborative effort, the village and so on. Now, if a child does something, and we see it all around the place. If a child does something, whether at school or in the community or wherever, parents will now say, leave my child. Don't mm. talk to my child. Don't tell my child nothing. You know how we get big so? I don't even lash my child and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. If a teacher administers punishment, corporal punishment is the only thing that was removed. But the law talks about reasonable punishment. So mm -hmm. children can still be punished. But punishment, we would always recommend take a sort of a restorative approach in terms of teaching children how to be accountable for their actions mm. and how to show love and value to each other, right? Mm -hmm. These days, that is, what's, that is what is happening. So the teachers are now ostracized. Mm. They are villainized. Mm. The community, so there's this separation. Mm -hmm. So in homes where there's just maybe a single parent, mm -hmm. Every mode of instruction now would have to come from that parent mm -hmm. because people are now afraid to put in the two cents. Got a parents are now coming down in school for teachers. Hmm. And the children are sitting and standing by and looking at your actions as a parent, which also serves to enable them. Mm -hmm. If you ill speak a teacher or a school or a system within the school at home and the child is within your hearing, your voice, the hearing of your voice, Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen when this child comes to school? Mm -hmm. If a teacher would have administered um, reasonable punishment to this child for whatever the reason is at school, you are not going to school to see what is happening or the reason for it, but you would now say, um, you would speak ill of this teacher. If the child constantly hears this coming from you, what level of, res of respect is this child going to have for that teacher in subsequent days? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, 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 it goes even way beyond the whole bullying aspect. Mm -hmm. 
mm. is an issue of behavior and behavioral adjustment that is needed right now. Mm -hmm. It calls for education. It calls mm. for a re um re calibration, calibration yeah. of okay. every system mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. in place. We have to revisit mm -hmm. all these systems mm -hmm. and change the way in which we um do things. Mm -hmm. We cannot use old solutions for new problems. Ah, true. Mm -hmm. VP, would you like to add in anything here? Well, I, I could um I agree with Officer Mills a whole lot, and I want to just um highlight that the school is really the place where we learn to live in society, mm -hmm. and children play in the society. Children play in the school, play, and they mm. play the games. It's just that the, the games they're playing now is different from what we used to play, where we might have mm. played hopscotch and those different things. Mm -hmm. They are playing six and seven. Mm -hmm. So the culture in the school is changing, mm -hmm. and the, the village is now a different village. Mm -hmm. The village that was referenced, in that the village where we used to care for others, the village is not so anymore. Mm -hmm. the, vill it is, the village is so, so changed that if perchance you are drowning, chances are somebody will take out their phone and film it. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, that is the challenge. The village has changed. The village is no longer seeing well. The village is no longer listening well. Mm -hmm. So the village is no longer hearing, no longer seeing that you're drowning. And the village is no longer hearing that you're drowning. So even though you're crying out, I need help. Because that's what victims do. Mm. I need help. I need protection. Right? Mm -hmm. This village is not hearing that anymore. Mm. All the village sees is that you are you drowning. We, we videotape you. If you mm. get beat up on the beat up on the side of the road, they take out their phone to film. They're not protecting Nobody you. Is looking to yeah. The village, the village, the village culture has changed. Mm. And and part of the reason for that is that the the society has changed. Mm. You know what I mean? In terms of the word society, the word of the society. In other words, um, Change the word and change your life. Change mm -hmm. the word and change your life. The Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. Mm -hmm. Let the weak say I am strong. The society in Tobago is a negative society. Hmm. It's a very, it's a very pro prose conscious society, a very poetic society, a very dramatic society, but it's very negative. Our language is negative. Mm -hmm. Watch out the WhatsApp chats, it's negative. Mm -hmm. Watch out the political space, it's negative. Mm -hmm. And we have created that by what we say. Our words have become who we are. In other words, what we were speaking of 10 years ago, well, how we've been speaking, the negativity, because the, the fact that somebody is, is, it's, it's, has passed away because of bullying mm. is not because it happened all of a sudden. The words were taking place back then. Mm -hmm. And we allowed it to, we allowed that in the village. We allowed that negativity in the village. Mm -hmm. To change the bullying situation, the schools have to begin to change. That playground has to change. Mm -hmm. The playground has to be different. The school playground, I mean the actual school has to change. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to begin to speak. We have to affirm our children. Mm -hmm. We have to deliberately affirm them. And mm -hmm. there are some schools doing that. I'm seeing that. I went, think I went, went to, to Goodwood High School once sometime. And I saw that they put up posters there trying to affirm the children. You have to do that deliberately and deliberately speak that into their lives. You must, you must. You have mm -hmm. to say, I am beautiful, I am special, I am precious. Mm -hmm. Every day yes. as they come into the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean? And this, and the Political space has to be different too. The political space has to be more affirming. Mm. You, yes, yes, you could say, oh, yes, greatest little island. That's, that's affirming in a sense. Yes. But on the deeper side of it, on, on the space where it matters most, we have to be more affirming. And I agree with have that. To be more and I agree with that. Um, I like the fact that you know we brought up the idea of the community and how our society has changed. Mm -hmm. Where it is, we are no longer protecting um, our vulnerable. Yeah. And I think that that is something mm -hmm. that we need to work on. I think that we need to. Our culture has changed, yes. right? Our society, our culture has changed. It's no longer the Tobago where we're looking out for our people. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, guys, mm -hmm. uh, that is the end of our discussion, at least for today. Yeah. Um, we hope that you join us for our Youth Wednesday program. Next week, Wednesday, I want to thank um, Officer Mills and VP Map for joining us here on Youth Wednesdays this morning um, to discuss bullying. 
uh, make sure that you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. This is the end of the morning show. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to share a live, share a live, share a live. And I hope that you all enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. That was good. We need yeah. to do it. We need to do it. We need to continue this conversation. I feel like we need to continue this conversation. Because the amount of questions that popped up in my head because yeah. we are talking about...